What is going on, beautiful people? It is Bet Slam with Sam once again coming at you with another fight breakdown. This time we have Julian Arosa, Juicy J, taking on Ricardo Ramos. Guys, Ricardo Ramos, minus 170 favorite. Julian Arosa coming back as a plus 150 dog. I'm going to start off talking about Juicy J. 28 and 12 record fighting out of the United States. A massive six foot one. He's a gargantuan featherweight with a 74.5 inch reach. Julian Arosa has been in the UFC a long time. And one thing I do want to talk about is he did just get finished by Fernando Padilla and what some would say was an early stoppage, but I think it was a fair stoppage because he was eating a lot of damage in quick succession. And Fernando Padilla, which I did just do a breakdown video on because he is on the same card, is lightning precise. You know, he tags you and he hits and he even knew where Julian Arosa's head was going to be and was following up shots in the movement. Everything he threw was like a magnet towards Julian Arosa's face. So the stoppage, it was a questionable, maybe. I thought it was a good stoppage. That being that being set aside, Julian Arosa has been TKO'd or KO'd six times under the UFC banner. And even though it is over a period of many years, that is still a concern because people talk about a chin and, and a chin going. Julian Arosa is 34 years old, which is not young in the sport, especially when you've had 40 professional fights. Julian Arosa's fight style is also chin wearing because often he gets into long drawn out exchanges where he is taking damage and dealing damage and over time that is a lot of wear and tear on the body that being said we haven't seen him in a while his last loss was to Fernando Padilla and we haven't seen him since it's been you know coming up on almost a year and we don't really know what version of Julian Arosa we're going to get Julian Arosa can fight anywhere the fight goes you know he gets taken down, but he stays in the match. He, when he's striking, can get tagged, but will stay in there, will dog it out. If he gets busted up, bruised, whatever, if you don't finish him, he's still there to fight. And he has a few phenomenal wins, really. I mean, he has a submission over Charles Woodson and also a submission over Charles Jourdain. And two of those guys are both great guys within the featherweight division, just outside of the rankings. And, you know, Juicy J is a great fighter. We're going to talk about Hikaru Hamas here. Hikaru Hamas is probably the correct favorite. Other than going out and getting a little bit exposed by Charles Jourdain in his last matchup where he was diving for takedowns and Charles Jourdain kept jumping guillotine, going guillotine, and all the commentary team was going, why is he going for this guillotine? Gets the guillotine. Hikaru Hamas sometimes comes out flashy striking, a lot of spin kicks, spin elbows, and sometimes can be quite a creative striker and have a striking heavy game plan. And other times he comes out and he decides he's a wrestler and shoots a shit ton of takedowns. And in this matchup in particular, depending on which version of who we get is going to be the outcome. Because if he comes out and wants to be the flashy striker, I think Julian Rosa probably will grind him down and win a three-round decision. Because if Ricardo Ramos waits too long to go for that takedown approach, then Julian Rosa will get ahead on the statistics and will win a decision potentially even finishing Hikaru Ramos if he starts failing takedowns and exhausts himself. But if Hikaru Ramos starts very fast, and I mean out the gate coming out and really swinging stuff, he could also break Julian Arosa because Julian Arosa, those six knockdowns slash TKOs over the years have worn his chin down a bit. And if you catch him while he's cold, you'll bust him up. So the path to victory, I think, for Hikaru Ramos is either start really fast and just try and break Julian Rosa, which you know he probably won't do, or go for a very grappling heavy takedown approach early. And I mean like off the bat, touch gloves, shoot, go. Because that is probably his two paths to victory there. If he lets Julian Rosa into this fight, I think Julian Rosa wins this matchup. And because Hikaru Ramos is coming off that submission loss to Charles Zordain, and we don't know where his head's going to be at with this one, and Julian Arosa coming off that finish to Fernando Padilla, I actually think the value side is on Julian Arosa being at that plus money. I see this fight as Hikaru Ramos should win. He should be the better athlete here and win, but I don't know what approach he's going to take, and that could be his demise here. And for Julian Arosa, he could get tagged or wrestle-fucked. But Julian Arosa has some sneaky submissions too, so... He could catch Hikaru Ramos, and especially after Hikaru Ramos did just lose by a guillotine. You know, if he just even threatens a guillotine, he's a big, tall guy. Maybe Hikaru lets go of the takedown. So what are we going to see in this matchup? 
I don't know, but I think the bidding value here is going to be on the Arosa side. I wouldn't throw this fight into too many of your parlays because you just don't know what's going to happen in this matchup. It's very volatile, very unpredictable. Sorry, I don't have a more clear pick here, but you know, speaking the truth and what I see in the matchups is what I like to do. So if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that like button, and I will see you all in the next one.